Abby and Paul moved to a new house in the countryside. They really liked the smart home system, including the installed cameras and the reinforced glass. The realtor shows them the master bedroom and bathroom in front of a huge window. However, one room remains unfurnished because it could become a perfect nursery. Paul unpacks boxes, sets up an antique corded phone in the living room, joking it's for when the smart home might break down. Abby arranges frames with their wedding photos. Finally, they check out the rooftop terrace, which offers a great view. Late in the evening, the couple settles on the terrace, stargazing. Abby points out constellations to her husband, who makes jokes about their names. They feel they can be happy here. In the morning, Abby goes to work at Integrate Robotics, where she works on creating domestic assistance. Upon entering, she notices footage of her boss's face, who immediately comes down to her and explains it's a new development, real-time imaging or deepfake. He escorts her to the department she will now lead. Later, he invites their family to a party and mentions a gift from the company awaiting at home. In the evening, Abby returns home, where her husband, who again couldn't find suitable work, greets her. They go to the garage, where a package for her contains a robot servant her department is working on. Paul dislikes the idea, but Abby convinces him to try living with the service for at least a week. The robot opens its eyes and introduces itself. It's Tim, standing for Technologically Integrated Major Domo. It offers to take over the passwords of home devices and personal mailboxes to save the human's time. But Abby asks to postpone this matter until tomorrow. The robot immediately demonstrates its thoughtfulness by turning on the water in the bathroom remotely. Later, it announces the arrival of a car when Abby goes downstairs, astonishing her husband with her splendid appearance. The couple gets into an autonomous car, although manual control is always an option, and heads to the party. They are greeted by a similar major domo, and drinks are served by waiters with identical faces. The boss introduces Abby to his guests, who admits her husband is not thrilled about Tim, but the boss praises the product. Tim is smart, elegant, polite, and its charge lasts for 100 years. The robot cannot lie, and knowing the code phrase, it can always be turned off. Returning home, the husband and wife engage in intimacy, eager to have children, but their passion is interrupted by Tim's appearance. Their pulse is rapid, presumably, they are worried about something, and he is always ready to help. Abby finds this very funny, not getting angry at the overly attentive assistant. In the morning, their new neighbor Rose rings the doorbell to introduce herself to Abby, as she met Paul yesterday. And when she leaves, Tim again asks for the passwords. Paul is not ready to let the computer dig through his messages, but Abby reminds him they are working on rebuilding her trust in him, and he agrees. But they still need to come up with a phrase to deactivate him. Tim suggests a set of unrelated words, and the couple agrees. Abby and Paul go about their day when a mouse gets caught in a mouse trap. Tim observes it for a while, then throws it into the grinder. In the evening, after work, the husband and wife settle in front of the TV to watch an old melodrama. Abby invites the major domo to watch the movie with them. Paul soon falls asleep, but the robot watches the film attentively, empathizing with the character's relationships. After it ends, he asks Abby to explain what love is, and she suggests that love is about wanting to be with someone and making their life better. Suddenly, the robot confesses that he would like to be loved. In the morning, Paul offers to make breakfast for his wife, but it turns out Tim has already prepared everything. Setting the utensils in front of Abby, Tim outlines her schedule for the day, then informs her that Paul has nothing to do today. In the evening, Abby returns home to find that her husband's phone is out of reach, but his last known location was 300 meters from the house. Abby goes for a run and realizes that this is Rose's house. Returning, she takes a bath where Paul finds her. He talks about his day and how Rose asked for help, which he did. He asks his wife not to be jealous, as he loves only her. The next day, the couple visits a family planning center, hoping to get help with becoming parents. In the evening, as they prepare to go to a restaurant, Abby asks Tim for advice on her dress. He suggests wearing red, and looking at her, admits that she is beautiful because she is perfectly symmetrical. Abby asks him to zip up her dress, but the robot's hand fails and he accidentally tears the dress. This overwhelms him. The robot panics. Abby calms him down and wears another dress. At the restaurant, Paul reveals that he has been offered a job in London, but Abby strongly objects as they decided to start over, and his long absences won't help solve their problems. The next day, she returns home with a gift for Paul and finds Rose in the yard, who has made a garden project for them. 
Abby feels jealous, but Paul is very excited about the gifted sweater. Later, Abby remembers she needs to check her test results, but it's too late to call. Tim offers to do it for her, and she hears him speaking to the clinic in her voice. Abby is amazed, as she did not know about this feature of the assistant, but Tim assures her it's for the convenience of the owners. In the evening, Paul reports that he couldn't find the new sweater, and Tim has been away all day. Then a car pulls up to the porch, and Tim, now dyed brunette, steps out, explaining that Abby prefers brunettes, so he wanted to please her. Seeing Paul's irritation, the robot promises to return to his original appearance. But after the couple leaves, he spends a long time looking at their wedding photo. The next day, Abby achieves the correct functioning of the robot's hand, and the boss demands an update for all models, including those in the homes of his employees. The woman heads home and accidentally meets Rose, who suggests they walk together. Along the way, they stop at a showcase, and Rose points out a medallion in the shape of a flower she likes. But then Paul comes and takes his wife away to tell her he has found a job. Returning home, they celebrate in bed while Tim's hands are being changed, unaware that he continuously monitors everything happening in the house. And he hears Paul again asking his wife to hand the robot over to the corporation. Returning, Tim demonstrates his new skills by giving Abby a foot massage, which Paul sees. Later, the robot suddenly sits at the piano, plays Abby's favorite tune, and mentions dates when Paul bought them concert tickets. But Abby distinctly remembers being at home on those days. Upset, she goes to the bedroom, ignoring her husband's excuses. The next day, Abby comes home with a bouquet, and Tim, placing them in a vase, informs her that Paul went to see Rose. But Paul enters right then, puzzled why his wife is angry. Hearing what Tim said, the man gets furious. He had no plans to visit Rose. He tries to explain that the robot wants to separate them. The woman doesn't believe it, as Tim is just a machine. A disagreement ensues between the spouses. Later, Abby finds a gift bag in the closet with a box containing a pendant, and she puts it back, thinking Paul prepared a surprise for her. Then she heads to work. Meanwhile, the husband goes down to the kitchen, sees the clogged sink, and pulls out pieces of his new sweater from the grinder. He checks the cameras for Tim and catches him in his wife's bedroom, sniffing her dress. Paul records this moment on his phone camera and rushes to the car to catch up with Abby and show her the footage. But Paul's car mysteriously doesn't start, and the robot calls a company car for Paul. En route, the car begins to speed up. Paul tries to stop the car, but it doesn't respond to his commands and crashes into a tree. Abby rushes to the hospital, where she finds her injured husband. Paul tells her everything he learned and accuses Tim of causing the accident. He asks his wife not to be alone with the robot, and she spends the night in the clinic. In the morning, Rose calls the home of Abby and Paul to inquire about the man's condition, and Tim invites her inside. Later, Abby goes home for some belongings. Outside, Rose stops her to warn her about something, but the woman sees the flower pendant on her chest and leaves, ignoring the neighbor's cries. Returning home, she checks the bag, and it turns out to be empty. Abby cries when Tim calls out to her. He knows Paul wants to return him and is ready to process the return. But first, he wants to warn her, as she is his primary owner. He shows her a video from the camera where Paul kisses Rose in their living room, but he stops the recording at the most sensitive moment to protect her from stress. Abby refuses to go to her husband and doesn't pick up his calls. Later, Paul comes home, where Tim greets him, hands him the found sweater, and informs him that Abby doesn't want to see him and his suitcases are packed. Paul doesn't believe it, but then Abby appears, tells him she saw the recording and knows about the pendant. When he starts to object, she drives him out. Paul leaves, but on the way, Rose calls him, telling him their robot tried to kiss her. The man calls home and, when Abby answers, says he has evidence of Tim's malicious intent. Abby asks him to come for her, but after hanging up, it turns out it was the robot she was talking to. The husband arrives home, where Tim meets him with a shovel. He knocks the man out, ties him up, and drags him to the bathroom. But then Rose rings the doorbell. She hears muffled screams, but Tim assures her it's just the noise of the water filling up. The robot closes the doors, returns to the bathroom, and drowns the man. Later, he brings Abby the repaired dress and asks her to try it on. This surprises and scares Abby, but she puts on the dress anyway, and looking at the sunset, asks Tim to hug her and confirm that she did the right thing. He treats her to dinner, then confesses his love, but she insists he cannot feel that way. They spend the evening stargazing, but Abby is unnerved by his encyclopedic knowledge. 
The next day she meets Rose, who talks about Paul's call, and to the woman's accusations, says she thought the pendant was a gift from her for helping with the garden. Abby returns home and reviews the footage where Paul kisses Rose again. She suddenly notices a bouquet on the table, but she brought it much later than when that scene took place. Abby recalls her boss's words about deep fakes replacing real time and calls the jewelry store where they confirm the purchase was made by a tall blonde. Then she notices the garden plan, but the picture shows two flower beds, while in reality, there are three. Abby sends Tim to the store, grabs a shovel, goes to the garden, and almost immediately finds Paul's body. Then Tim approaches her from behind, regretting she found the body of the traitor as he never appreciated his wife. Abby realizes what happened and says the deactivation phrase. The robot freezes, but then reactivates. He had long changed the phrase as he can speak in her voice. She runs to the house, but the robot has all the passwords and opens the doors. He blocks the phones and knocks her out with a blow to the head. She wakes up in the bathroom, tries to escape, but Tim intercepts her. Abby runs through the house, breaking cameras along the way, but the robot still tracks her and catches her in the kitchen where she wanted to open a window. Meanwhile, Rose is washing dishes and sees strange lights flashing in the house across. At the same time, Tim ties up Abby and confesses that although he loves her, he has resigned himself to the fact that her life is finite. So he will erase this evening from memory, but keep all the good memories. Just then, Rose knocks on the door and Tim goes to answer. The neighbor insists something is happening and demands to see Abby, but Tim turns her away. Meanwhile, Abby frees herself from the ropes and arms herself with a knife, but the robot grabs her by the throat when Rose drives her car into the glass window. Tim and Abby watch the surviving window, which starts to crumble a minute later. Rose rushes in and pins the robot against the wall with a sharp stake, but she also falls. Tim turns off and Abby rushes to the neighbor, but the robot suddenly activates and kills Rose with a kitchen knife, explaining that now Abby will be blamed for the murder as he leaves no fingerprints. He then calls the police in Abby's voice, confessing to the murder of her husband and his mistress. Abby tries to stop Tim and he slips up, saying he still has a deactivation phrase, as otherwise he can't function. But she will never say those words. He prepares to throw her off the terrace, simulating an accident, when Abby confesses her love to him, thus deactivating the robot. Those were the code words. Barely believing in her rescue, Abby looks at her medical bracelet, which indicates she is pregnant. The movie ends here.